Gilliman, Primarch of the Ultramarines. Everyone knows about the return of the Primarch Robute Gilliman in the events of the Gathering Storm. But how much do you know about his early years and where he came from? Illustrations by Dong Ghoul Troll. More about that at the end. To make war, you need an army. And to lead an army, you need a general. Naturally, the Emperor needed generals for his Great Crusade, so he created the 20 Primarchs. They were created from the Emperor's own genetic material and unfathomable technology. No doubt they were beyond mere mortals. But things didn't go as envisioned. The Primarchs, in their infancy, were engulfed by a warp vortex and scattered across the galaxy. For the cause of this scattering, some suspect the Dark Gods and some suspect the Emperor, so that the Primarchs live a life beyond the laboratory. The truth is shrouded in mysteries. Whatever the truth, the Primarchs were out of the Emperor's hand, and all that was left was the remaining genetic material. With it, the Emperor created the Space Marines. This is why Marines resemble their Primarchs, and their relationship is like that of a father and son. The Primarchs returned to the Imperium during the Crusade, and each became the commander of the Legion made from his genes. Let's begin with Robute Gilliman of the Ultramarines. He fell upon the world of Macrag in the eastern fringe of the galaxy. The place was bleak, but not inhospitable. Its industries had survived the Age of Strife relatively intact. McCrag also preserved some short-range warp-capable craft and maintained contact with several nearby human systems. Compared to other human colonies in the galaxy, it was almost a paradise. Because they retained such sophisticated culture, the locals, who discovered the Primarch's capsule during their hunt, did not think of it as a thing of superstition or magic but a device of advanced technology. Anyway, they opened the capsule and found a perfectly formed baby surrounded by a nimbus of power. The baby was taken by a noble with the title of Consul, who governed the most civilized and powerful region of Macrag, Connor Gilliman. Connor named the baby Robute and adopted him as his own son. Robute was brought up by a chamberlain named Tarasha Yutin, to all intents, she was a mother to him. Robut called her ma'am, and Tarasha often called him boy. She was a wise and strong person. Tarasha advised Robute even after he was all grown up, and even the Ultramarines respected her. Since most Primarchs didn't enjoy the luxury of mothers, you can say Robute was exceptionally fortunate. The young Primarch grew unnaturally fast, and thanks to his superhuman intelligence, he mastered everything the wisest tutors could teach him by the age of 10. Robute excelled in history, philosophy, and science. His ability to deduce accurate conclusions from fragmentary info was remarkable, but his most outstanding talent lay in the art of war. As soon as he had attained his legal majority, Connor gave him command over an expeditionary force to pacify Illyrium in the north, a barbarous land full of brigands and mercenaries. Of course, Robute's campaign was successful, and he won both the mission and the respect of the fierce Illyrian warrior bands. But Robute's triumphal return was greeted by a burning city. It was a coup d'etat by the other consul, Galen. Macrag's aristocrats used to enjoy tremendous wealth by exploiting the commoners. Connor confronted this head on and improved the quality of life of the common people. While weakening the aristocrats' power, he also forced them to fund enhancing the infrastructure. Obviously, the commoners supported Connor, and the aristocrats hated him vehemently. Furthermore, his heir, Robute, showed how capable he was day by day. Gallen and the others got frightened and tried to protect their privilege by killing Connor. Robute ordered his men to defend the city and rushed to his foster father's rescue. But for three days, the wounded consul had directed the defense and was dying when his son arrived. Connor detailed the extent of Gallen's betrayal and breathed his last. Robute's cold rage was unstoppable. With the full backing of his army and the beleaguered citizens, he crushed the aristocratic rebels. Meanwhile, Gallen thought everything was according to his plan. 
At the Senate, he claimed that Gilliman was behind the coup, and he was the one who protected McCrag. Robute suppressed his anger and revealed the truth in front of the senators. He then said he would fully accept their decision. Gallen expected the aristocrats to support him, but their anger was directed at him. This was because lying in the hall of the Senate was beneath contempt. Soldiers took Gallen into custody for following the principles even after his father had been murdered. The aristocrats showed respect to Robute. Those who organized the coup were later executed. After that, with thousands of citizens acclaiming, Robute became the sole and all-powerful consul of Macrag. The new consul broke the old aristocratic order and ruthlessly enforced meritocracy. The hard-working prospered, while those who worked against the community were punished. United under Gilliman's vision, Macrag developed at an incredible speed. Before that, though, while Gilliman was in Illyrium, the planet Espandor, far from Macrag, was visited by the Emperor. The Espandorians told him about Macrag and the extraordinary son of the consul. The Emperor immediately knew that this son was a Primarch. The Emperor departed to retrieve his lost Primarch. But a sudden warp storm emerged and isolated Macrag and nearby systems for five years. While the Emperor was waiting outside the storm, the devastated cities of Macrag were rebuilt in marble and shining steel. Its army was rearmed and became a powerful one capable of off-world operations. From the history lessons of his youth, Gilliman knew fragments of the golden age of mankind, so his ambitions were reaching for a domain beyond the Sea of Night, or to use the ancient form found in the texts, Ultramar. After the storm subsided, the Emperor visited Macrag and told Gilliman the truth. Then Gilliman immediately swore his fealty to the Emperor and became the commander of the 13th Legion. His vision for the Legion and the excellent oratory to deliver it, filled the legionaries with a renewed vigor. They changed their livery to blue and gold and took the ancient Ultima glyph as their icon and changed their cognomen to the Ultramarines. Special thanks to Dong Ghoul Troll for letting me share his great comic. I'll put a link to his blog below. He also has a new comic book out about Norse mythology. Following the adventures of the Norse gods, the beautiful goddesses, and the formidable giants. If that sounds like something you'd be interested in, I'll drop a link for that below too. As always, if you liked the video, please give a like and subscribe to join our ever-growing Imperium of subscribers. It really means so much to us. Thank you. Until our next adventure.